All right, welcome everybody to the IMTS YouTube channel. Uh, welcome back to our IMTS series of uh, Professionals React, is what we'll call it. But uh, we've got uh, Vanessa here joining me again, and the illustrious Tim. We're gonna watch some movies today and some other cool, uh, fascinating tech clips, and naturally we're gonna react to them. So let's take it away. Uh, the first clip that we want to look at is Stowaway. It was a movie that I believe came out in 2020, and it's got some interesting manufacturing technology and just overall uh, fancy metal that we can definitely riff on. So let's give it a, let's take it away. Yeah, he's still unconscious, but I mean, is he a threat? Do we need to, I don't know, find a way to restrain him? Or? All right. Pause right there. So, right off the bat, um, we're, have you guys seen this movie? No, actually. Okay, so let's not spoil too much <laughs> of it, but um, this first part right here, they're on a space station. Something happens, we won't get into that, but the captain of the crew, and it's a crew of three, uh, something happens, she breaks her arm, and so they are actually 3D printing her a cast to, um, you know, so she can heal and uh, be useful on the ship and do the day-to-day -day tasks. But I remember watching this movie, my first beef and primary beef with the movie was it's awesome that they got a 3D printer on their space station. Totally makes sense. But having gone to Spacecom a handful of times with Tim, I know that 3D printers actually are most effective and do some of their best work in zero G. And like one of the first things they do once they finally get uh, out of um, the stratosphere of Earth, the gravitational influence of Earth, is they uh, deploy artificial gravitational field. So that was my big problem. Tim, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I, I love it, dude. You, you <laughs> You have all the great attributes of space to manufacture there, and then you spend a ton of time and a ton of dollars to put Earth right back in there, and you lose it all. Yeah. Notwithstanding that, it, is, it was good to see at least. And this, it, speaking of Earth, this looks like an oven. So, <laughs> is it, is it, does, do they typically look like this? 3D printers? Yeah, in space or whatever the case may be, like, or do we expect it to look like an oven later on in the future? So, the 3D printers actually, they, they do look somewhat like that, but the reason why it's set into a cabinet like that is for, um, there, there's, there's reasons, for example, like you don't want the 3D printer to move around. So that cabinet actually is, is for space efficiency and it keeps it in place. There was a company that a uh, long time ago I interviewed with called Zodiac. And Zodiac actually, they're known for two things. They made, um, the little pontoon boat that Navy SEALs uh, float ashore on when they're uh, raiding somebody. Rigid hull. <laughs> yeah, boat. there you go. The Zodiac made the, or originally mm -hmm. engineered those, and Zodiac also does microwaves and stuff for commercial airliners. Like they don't, when, when you have uh, a microwave on an airplane, they don't just pull some microwave that they found at Walmart. They need to get a specially designed microwave to go into uh, an airplane hull and especially a, uh, a galley like that. So that sort of cabinet is, while that is a conventional 3D printer, the cabinet is designed to keep it in place on a space station. Now, another thing that if you look at this, so you got a great marketing branding there for MakerBot, it's that kind of a part is usually a powder bed produced part. You see no powder around, so let's give it a, let's give a nod out to the future. Right. They figured a way to how to introduce powder to the energy source without a powder bed, and it rises beautifully. We don't have to do any shake out of the part. We have no post processing to it. Oh, we we could take that away too. I didn't catch that at all. <laughs> Movie magic got me. There you go. Ivy Lee shenanigans starting up. Some some rivalry. Mm -hmm. Oh, boom! There we go. Yeah, that's that's why I had them throw in this uh, this clip. The um, watch. The watch. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so that is an Omega Speedmaster Professional, and it's of the only it watch certified by NASA for extravehicular activity. And there was a few other. There was two other watches that were in competition for that uh, certification. Um, the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona 
which they, you know, cocky enough of Rolex, they called it the Cosmograph because they figured it was going to be the Ooh. watch for space, and they didn't get the certification. Wow. Omega, on the other hand, designed that watch for auto racing purposes, and auto racing only. It just happened to fit NASA's requirements. It was a very simple watch. It's manually winding. It's not uh, self-winding. It's not automatic. And NASA, this was a little bit of a knock on NASA, in my opinion. They ended up going, one of the reasons why they ended up going with the simpler uh, Speedmaster was because it didn't have that self-winding mechanism, because they figured in space, especially on a space station, there would be less gravity or no gravity, and a self-winding self -winding mechanism would be relatively useless, which is silly, because self-winding is mostly accomplished via inertia and not gravity. There you have it, folks. I had to throw it in there. <laughs> and you I'm sorry. Had to. But, uh, it would not be a clip without that. Thank you. <laughs> I need that watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's more importantly, where's right. ours? That's, I don't know why I need it, but yeah. I've got a YouTube <laughs> clip spec watch. I don't know. <laughs> Well, guys, that was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me with this, Tim. Thanks I know for you're me, a very busy man, Vanessa. I know you don't have a lot of time for this. Thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed. If you like this, like, share, subscribe. And if you want us to react to some other content, go ahead and comment it below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>